Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Aware and Care, your weekly Ayurvedic update. A conversation with Dr. Ambika Nair, who is the co-founder and chief consultant at Shanti Gram Group of Companies. Aware and Care, a very popular show by now, where you talk about your problems, and Dr. Ambika Nair gives you all the suggestions and remedies which will help you to develop your health. Let's welcome her to the show. Welcome, Dr. Nair. Namaskara. Namaskara. Dr. Nair, it's been a year of pandemic, and I think we've used this word too often. When it first started, we didn't know what it was, but as things moved on, and we started getting used to the mask, and started getting used to the habits and routines of cleanliness and sanitizers and doing everything, we suddenly realized a couple of other things that our body is reacting to or having pressure on. Most of us, after wearing the mask, we started realizing that we're feeling very giddy. And most of us also thought that it is because of lack of oxygen. That gave us a thought triggering. You know, many a times with the mask or without the mask, many of us feel this little sudden dizziness happening. When we get up from a chair, we feel a little, you know, swinging of the body. Suddenly you look down from your chair or you stand up from two stairs, you feel that your body is swinging forward or backward. So many of us was having this conversation that it is due to the mask. And I was also having a little discussion saying that it is possibly not because of the mask. There could be other underlying conditions. So let's talk about that today as to why is our body swinging at certain angles when we get up, sit down or do certain things. Some of us told that it is called vertigo. We would like to hear the experts advice on that. Okay, very nice subject. You asked me to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for choosing it. Okay, it is called Brahma in Ayurveda. Oh, okay. Okay, because actually, you know, like uh, you, are, you are not coordinated properly, mentally. Uh -huh. Okay, that's one of the things, vertigo, it is called a dizziness also. Okay. So it is a medical condition, you know, where, you know, you suffer from a sensation of spinning. Uh -huh. And you feel that the whole world is spinning, spinning around you. That's true. <laughs> yeah, because actually when you get up, you know, like, a, uh, see, with the moment it aggravates. Yes. Yeah. Because if you are lying down, sometimes if you lie down also, you will feel that because you, the, you know, like if you are lying on the bed, you know, you feel that the, the bed is going, you know, up. One side is becoming like a low. But mm. they always feel like that because that equilibrium is not maintained. True. Okay. So, you know, that fear psychosis comes in that and the person will never get up from there because it's very difficult to do such cases. You know, some people are... Very, especially when you become literally old, you know, like then you have the fear of falling down. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is one of the reasons, you know, they, they don't feel like, you know, getting up from the bed actually. Okay. Okay. So let, let us, let us go back to the basic. I thought I was just asking a very simple question of what spinning or, you know, feeling dizziness. But um, from what I'm understanding that there is a gradual process through it that we need to observe this little, little signs that sometimes suddenly you feel a little spinny, but it, rest of the day you're fine. Certain times of the day you feel a little giddy or, you know, you feel that the chair is swinging or the bed is moving. Yes. yes. So is it the alignment of the body, the eyes or the uh, no, sight? No, 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 no. It can be, you know, the causes can be anything actually. If you have like a cervical spondylitis also, uh -huh. even tinnitus, like oh. a buzzing sound in the ear, you know, like mm -hmm. a, sometimes mm -hmm. with a heavy sinus, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And if you are asthmatic also. Sometimes you can leave to, if your blood pressure is low or high, also it can happen. Some people will always feel it. Mm -hmm. So how, how dangerous is this condition? Is it chronic or people feel it and frequencies are coming only on certain times of the day? No, it will not be continuous. It, it Occasionally only it comes like that. Actually. Okay. So you know your body actually. Mm -hmm. See, understanding your own body is more important in this case actually. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is that because you know that when you get up, Yes. You know, that uh, if there is no light, especially to the, you know, whether it is old or, you know, young. So, you know, like it is better you put on the light, switch on uh -huh. the light and stay mm -hmm. in the bed for like uh, two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Then slowly you get up. Oh, okay. This is okay. Otherwise, you know, like because, you know, like even I have seen that even brain tumor, such cases also, you know, I mm -hmm. want to tell that, but I'm telling we have seen that such cases also that this vertigo is very common. So there is a vast condition of situations where this is possible. A normal, healthy human being also sometimes feels that. Like, you know, women, we see that when during yes. their periods, they feel that they're feeling a little anemic. 
and they feel that oh my head is spinning or uh, somebody no, who's anemia and all that is in there different actually if your iron level is low you know you feel fatigue yes. with the fatigue also and if you lose a lot of blood like you know uh, with the diarrhea okay that so, also uh, then, uh, that is very common actually you know like mm-hmm. you, and if you are having an accident if you are like you're bleeding a lot Mm-hmm. so naturally with the hemorrhage also it can cause like that okay, okay. but you know like uh, the normally it, it is like a, a losing your balance equilibrium you know like you are not having the equilibrium you know like sometimes some people will tell that you know some sound is heard like a, you know like a, uh, you know like not tinnitus uh, like a swimming like a water ooh, ooh, water okay. gushing in the head you know mm-hmm. and you know crawling crawling in the head because mm-hmm. this all the symptoms what i am telling you know what how patients comes and tells me actually okay spinning mm-hmm. of the head just mm-hmm. like that they can't even lift their head they cannot look any side that is normally with you know like uh, anglesing spondylosis or cervical spondylosis i have seen such cases also mm-hmm. and yeah any you know like any other uh, arthritis related with the neck mm. and if the person is having you know like even vasovagal attack if yes, they are standing yeah. for a long time mm-hmm. and if the the pressure comes down then also for a you know split of seconds they will feel vertigo and that could be fatal too so doctor as we started this conversation we've just suddenly i realized that we've covered so many things about vertigo whether you know what triggers vertigo what are the underlying conditions what are the symptoms we've already come to that particular aspect of it i also wanted to uh, before we go towards the treatment and understanding other aspects of it how dangerous is the situation because when we talk about vesa vehicle you suddenly fall off you could hit your head there could be bodily injuries but chronic vertigo what are the extreme situations in that chronic vertigo means you know when you know you know you cannot drive at that time okay because you should not drive actually mm-hmm. especially some people tell that because when they drive at night mm-hmm. the glare of the light it make them dizzy mm-hmm. so you know they should not uh, you know like uh, driving has to be stopped actually mm-hmm. and going to places alone if mm-hmm. they are little you know like but young states you know they manage it well yeah because they do the treatment and they will take care of that but here mm-hmm. elders only it's very difficult yeah yeah because moving little movement also they should not and the youngsters you know they should not wear any high heel yes <laughs> they should always wear mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like uh, flat shoes yes. shoes are the so, best for that because they will not you know like uh, walking you know like they they will become better and then you should always sleep without a pillow Okay, blood circulation is a must. Then. Okay, so that will help a lot. And you know, if you have high BP, check mm-hmm. it properly mm-hmm. so that you will be able to, uh, you know, like uh, take care of yourself. Sometimes there won't be any reason, you know, like because it is only fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that also fear cycles mm-hmm. also creates all these things. Because once you had a vertigo, means for every reason, you know, like anything, you know, whatever you do, sometimes even you know that a fear of heights. Oh, yes, I made yes. it vertigo. That is that is there. <laughs> Some days nothing will be there. That's what I'm telling. You know, little sudden jerking movements. That's what you know. Height. If you go in the uh, rounds at all, you know, like uh, then you can see. Very good rounds. Things, you know, very, yeah. But uh, doctor, you just mentioned a very important point because most of us are under the assumption that vertigo is usually fear of heights or it happens only at the heights. But with this conversation, which has just started, we just realized there are so many reasons and underlying conditions because of which vertigo could happen. Now, uh, I also want to touch base on something um, which is very common these days: a normal, healthy being, supposedly that we are. We are looking at our phone for a long time, and suddenly somebody calls us. We get up, and that still we have that little dizziness or jerking. feeling that is also vertigo that is a small a small so version of vertigo dosage, little dizziness dizziness okay yeah maybe you know that you are not drinking water for a long time oh okay because you are too much indulged in your work mm-hmm. so you forgot to drink water hydration is more important actually okay so so when we when we talk about basic vertigo despite all these conditions which organ of the body is which is uh, mostly triggering this is it the sinus part or the brain or the nervous system nervous Which system nervous system nervous system okay yeah 
because actually so, it is a combination you know it cannot be only nervous system because mm -hmm. other other things are also that should like degenerative disease degenerative yeah so and, sometimes and happens. do you in your experience see any specific body type or composition of the body that these people are more prone to vertigo it is um, normal for all kapha age and vata, and kapha and vata more okay yeah i have seen more kapha and vata people mm -hmm. yeah little you know like your base people you know like they don't uh, they are afraid to move you know like sometimes you know they may fall uh -huh. and parkinson people you know like because they don't they lose the balance okay so there are so, so many other diseases actually there are so many other diseases also yeah uh, you just mentioned about the body types that are more prone to it that does not uh, say anybody that anybody is prone actually anybody, anybody could prone. have it it's a blanket because problem because pitta people we have seen a lot of cases because pitta they will not sleep you know like if you don't have a sleep also you understand now if your sleep is impaired if you are not sleeping for a long you know like a few days you cannot your work pressure is like that you are unable to sleep for a long you know like a two three days means you will feel dizzy yes. because you are not uh, eating your coming, food yeah. properly you are not nourished properly so your yeah. diet also you know like it plays a good part in it mm -hmm. So, Doctor, there is a very thin line of difference between fear and vertigo. Vertigo is a medical condition. Fear is also based somewhere in the borderline, which you can explain more. Do you also often see that children are more prone to it? Because sometimes, when a child is learning to walk, of course, he is a little wobbly, and at some point, they start balancing and walking. Uh, but there are many people over the time you see them wobble a lot when they are walking. Is it to do with the foot condition, or do you think there is also that little vertigo? That we have speak? to see that why why they are why are why? they like this because mm -hmm. you have to diagnose them properly. Mm -hmm. Because what is the underlying factor uh -huh. which made them made them like that? That's it. Okay. That is the correct way of diagnosis. Okay. Um, be traditionally or. as humans we love to encourage each other motivate each other and inspire each other to do certain things if i am afraid of certain things i'm sure you will have certain words to comfort me make me feel encouraged same happens with people with vertigo when somebody yes. is with fear that i i'm afraid of heights there are people usually who pox them no try it once try it once and we have often seen people vomiting or collapsing or you know having strokes during so much of fear and anxiety because of vertigo now let's also talk about first basic thing to do when somebody experiences a symptom what is the first thing that they should do they should see that whether you know like because see it should be from the you know like uh, the family people okay friends you know that there is see ups and downs are there in life mm -hmm. so you know like you should always come out how to bail mm -hmm. out the person that is more important actually mm -hmm. okay so counseling is more important so you have to treat the person in the proper way because mm -hmm. in my clinic in the in, the, in our uh, shandigram also you know we get a lot of client here like that you know okay. how they will tell they i don't drive i don't drive in the you know because i i can only go in between you know like uh, very small places i mm -hmm. don't go or uh, i cannot drive on the uh, like uh, uh, you know route world yes, or anything like that they will be telling mm -hmm. that park way i am afraid because when i turn you know like i get giddiness mm -hmm. i tell you know like uh, this fear is baseless you know because nothing will happen because your neck was only causing that mm -hmm. and you know like after few days because they will be asking somebody to drop them off then you know like after few days you know like we counsel them in such a way and that fear is removed and not only counseling them and treating them properly so that they gain the confidence doctor we were just talking about the nervous system part of vertigo and then we also came to the counseling part but something comes to my mind immediately we often seen that you know when people pick up small children they lift them at the height and they start shaking them and you know drop no, them suddenly that is a very wrong practice yeah so those kind of practices also maybe um, subconsciously instill the fear of heights and you know a vertigo which comes no, which that, we never realize it happens that actually that should not be a big issue okay. because actually you know in in our culture in south asian culture mm -hmm. we always toss the child toss the child. Okay. Yeah. So that is okay, but you know, like That's I don't, you know, sometimes you know, don't recommend that. You know, and of course, friends, as when you're listening yeah, no. to the program, please also visit and consult the doctor before you try any of these remedies which doctor would be sharing. And these are basically habits which have come through generations and with time and information and programs like this, we've realized 
what is the right way and what is the um, consequences of certain behaviors that we have followed traditionally or over the time. So Dr. Nair, let's also move ahead and also talk about um, does vertigo go away by itself or a treatment is always required? No, some cases, you know, if it is related to the blood pressure, you understand, no? Uh-huh. Okay. You know, some people will come and tell, you know, I was pushing a cart mm -hmm. with so much of groceries. Mm -hmm. So suddenly I felt giddy, giddy you know, like a big giddiness, dizziness. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was sitting over there for a long time. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, because, when, you know, like maybe at that time you were dehydrated. Yeah. Okay. So that also reasons are there or some whistling sound in the ear, mm -hmm. which made you like a very, very, very dizzy. Mm -hmm. So these things should be avoided because you understand the body means how it happens. Sometimes, you know, like a train, you know, in the train station, mm -hmm. see the high sound, you know, the, the, when the, the train is going in a high speed, mm -hmm. some people will come and tell me, oh, I cannot stand over there because, you know, that uh, I feel that with the, with that, that sound, you know, like sound, yeah, the body yeah. is also, yeah, the, you know, that I vibrate and I get the vertigo. So, avoid such things. That's what I'm telling. Okay, at least so, go a little far and take care of yourself. Uh, what are the basic medical tests that are done to confirm this diagnosis or to understand somebody has a uh, vertigo? Oh, is there a they will do MRI, MRI yeah. to rule mm -hmm. out whether any other brain the problems are there. Mm -hmm whether any epileptic they are, because epilepsy people also will tell like that only. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this, you know, they were medical things they will rule out. And also in your, in your experience, have you seen any injury related uh, vertigo? So Apart many, so many cases. Because to the nerves, you know, because it comes like that. But you know, some cases it takes a lot of time. Some cases goes very fast because it all depends upon the condition of the person. So and how the is the diagnosis the possible, team. doctor? Because your your book of um, um, explanation right now has so many aspects of vertigo. Uh, when we started this conversation, I thought it was just basic dizziness or fear of heights or vomiting or little that, you know, feeling in the stomach. That's what vertigo is. But there are so many underlying conditions which could lead to this. So how does the diagnosis actually start at Shantigram? If a patient comes in and says... He's constantly feeling dizzy or, you know, he's feeling very, so very they will be telling because time. these things, you know, because we will see that aggravated vata it is, you understand? Okay. No? So mm -hmm. the pulse reading we will be doing. Nowadays, you know, like most of the cases that we are seeing in person, they come with the COVID report, actually. If okay. it is negative, we are seeing a lot of patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even the therapies are going up. Then okay. we will understand, we will take the history of the patient mm -hmm. and we will ask certain questions. So that, you know, like uh, not only the pulse reading also, we will understand that whether how they feel it. Mm -hmm. okay, then we will do, we will start the therapies actually. Karnapuranam is done for these patients. Nasim is done. Some cases, you know, Dhara is given. With the year? Yeah, with the year. So okay. the balancing will be taken care actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that will be taken care. I'm learning this little words. Like Nasim effect. is got to do with the nose? Nasim, you understood my everything. <laughs> yeah, Nasim is with the nose. Please actually. continue, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like a vestibular effect, you know, so that when we do the Karnapurana, like even sometimes, you know, like with the third day, they will tell that, oh, I feel much better. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the process and the timeline of the treatment apart from uh, the basic understanding of somebody's body type and the conditions? Like it is, it is, it all depends upon the case. Like sometimes okay. two weeks, sometimes one week, sometimes mm -hmm. five days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will go like three weeks because if they have any other issues like that. Mm -hmm. Related issues, underlying issues, how much it is there accordingly, we go with that. Actually. Yeah. And um, in these kind of treatments, Panchakarma is also recommended or it is only... Panchakarma specific? only I am talking about. Panchakarma okay. only we will do that. Okay. Thalam will be given on the Brahma because it's an aggravation. It's a Vata Dorsha. So mm -hmm. that will take care. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in our diet also, we will be telling them to drink a lot of fruit juices. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you know, like they can always, you know, like a celery water, celery boiled water, they can use using your green salads, green mm -hmm. juices, they can use, use vegetable, eating a lot of vegetables. Then, you know, like if they are having so much of DD at that time, they can have a little bit of cold water. Mm -hmm. Okay, that will help them a lot, actually. Calm down a lot. And, you know, like they can use in the kitchen, you know, you can have like raisins. 
soft raisins are very good poppy seeds you can add in your diet like that okay dates are very good so that your hemoglobin will be good pomegranate so you know like and there are so many you know like cucumber all those things you can use a lot Dr. So when you just mentioned these um, home remedies or foods that we should inculcate, yeah. um, I, a thought came to my mind. Why is it that when somebody is very stressed, they feel giddy? What happens to the body at that time? The stress that is, is with the anxiety. anxiety. That is with the anxiety. Some people will have this fear of death when the vertigo comes. You understand? Or they are see they feel that because actually they feel that they are going down, 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 yeah. down, down like mm-hmm. that. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you know that is a fear of death actually because nothing is happening. but the, the, they will be feeling it the other person will not understand that actually so at that time we can give them you know like a cold water mm-hmm. okay that is very good fresh juice is very good at that time instead of going for fresh juice and all you can directly give water mm-hmm. and sprinkle water on their face they now that comes much. to a very important question which i thought i should definitely ask you yeah uh, right wrong i am not sure because you are here to help us many people suggest that when your head is spinning go and take a nice shower cold water hot water is it recommended cold water cold water cold water cold water so a no, shower very cold because i cannot say in this country you go and take uh, very cold yes. water means you know you will freeze mm-hmm. so you know lukewarm water lukewarm water okay at least you know but you can sprinkle cold water on your face which will you know it is a good stimulus actually okay stimulating okay okay so that will help you a lot Mm-hmm. and check your blood pressure some days your blood pressure may be very low mm-hmm. and it is seen with the hypothyroid patients also okay their bp will go very low mm-hmm. like 60 40 and all then you know they feel little dizzy so every vertigo is not a vertigo okay okay you have to you have to see that why the vertigo happened and you have to treat for the root cause actually interesting very interesting uh, there's so much more to i could dwell on that but now we're talking about you know treatments for a uh, vertigo friends and in this episode we're talking about vertigo we discovered about uh, various aspects as to why vertigo happens what are the symptoms and what are the foods that you should inculcate um, to you know uh, get over this condition what about the exercises and any kind of people who have the fear of even public spaces they feel my head is spinning if i go to a crowded place um apart from claustrophobia also people have this feeling yeah. that they start feeling yeah. uh, uh, nauseated and everything so what do you recommend to those people what kind yeah, of some exercises? people actually they will want to tell you know like symptoms are nauseating sweating vomiting will be there uh-huh. difficulty in walking this all other symptoms you know which are related with that mm-hmm. okay so this is all because little bit of vertigo is there otherwise you know they are okay and you know like yeah, because that should avoid such circumstances actually yeah, mostly okay. i tell that you know okay. and you know like yeah, lime juice is very good but if you are outside you won't be able to get a lime juice right so you can put little salt in that mm-hmm. and you know like if your blood pressure is high reduce your salt intake mm-hmm. okay ginger and you know like uh, ginger water is very good for you that is very nice ginger and garlic you can just uh, boil and take it that is also very nice okay then you know like uh, uh, check your hemoglobin and all okay mm-hmm. check your you know like yourself how how nicely you look whether mm-hmm. you are able to you know like you understand your body madhavi absolutely yeah. mm-hmm. whether you will be going you know like some day some days you don't feel like going out mm-hmm. you feel i feel little fatigue a little tired yes. you may not be able to you know like do the daily course and mm-hmm. that day you know stay at home and take care of yourself because so much of work work has to be done especially in this country mm-hmm. you know like because help pays are very less Mm-hmm. So you have to take. And now, as we becoming more and more independent, we have to first focus on health, and all the other things need to wait. And if it is required to sit down for a few minutes, please do that, viewers. Uh, vertigo is a condition which could lead to other injuries if you do not have your balance in place. Doctor, do you also often see pregnancy-related vertigo, which is very temporary and just comes and goes? Yeah, per- pregnancy-related. That that may be some other reasons will be there. You understand? No? Okay. Yeah. okay that is it's vertigo is in every anybody can get vertigo okay. yeah you know like you can take ashwagandha uh-huh. trifala mm-hmm. so that if your stomach related problems are there like bloated mm-hmm. you feel like vomiting you know all those things so identifying the problem okay then treat for it 
that, that's a vast subject that we have covered today. Doctor, in your experience of um, treating patients with vertigo, what is the one mistake most patients do during the treatment? Normally, they don't follow the diet properly. <laughs> yeah, basic yeah that, you know, diet. like they will tell that I have cheated, but we have, they are very sweet. 90 percent they will do it actually. They will follow it. Okay. Yeah. See, our culture, like South Asian culture is entirely different, you know, because we want to be very strong because we don't have much people over here. Uh -huh. So, you know, that you are all alone. Uh -huh. So, you know, like that, that thought process to keep yourself healthy. Uh -huh. That, you know, yeah. like make them to do. Nowadays, you know, because people are more aware about yes. their health. Yes, yes. So yeah. they keep on asking me questions. They keep on asking me questions. Yeah. You know, friends, one thing I definitely want to mention here during the program that when Dr. Nair said that they keep on asking questions, it is so very true that uh, despite having a program like Aware and Care, and once uh, um, when Dr. Nair and her entire team takes a patient under their wings, they go very, very, they have a very beautiful relationship with the patient. They do not just give the medicines. They say, you go and you come back after 10 days. Their follow-up sessions are very beautiful. Uh, they personalize most of the treatment and complete privacy. Uh, and they stress more on consultation because Dr. Ambika and I have surely endorses the fact that half the pro problem is here. The rest is in the food. So if you correct these two things, I think most of the times the patients are well taken care of. Right, Dr. Nair? Definitely, because everybody is a patient, Madhavi, whether you, me or anybody. Yes. So, you know, like this is only, you know, like a setback in life, you know, sometimes, you know, so we always try to help a lot. Absolutely. And, and most of you the know, like I take, personally, I take the... care of them. Yes. Many times, as we've discussed in this program, uh, uh, it's the matter of conversations that's are very important with people. You need somebody to communicate with, whether it's your problem or your solution, you need to discuss it. And Dr. Nair and her entire team provide that little package of comfort zone where, you know, the patient feels comfortable to express their thought. And many a times after the consultation itself, the patient starts feeling very good. Thank you so much, Dr. Nair, on this episode about vertigo. If there's anything that you want to add on, please feel uh, free to add on. No, if you get the vertigo, you know, once it is okay. But if it mm -hmm. is continuously coming, you know, please seek the help of a doctor. Absolutely. Okay. And exercises, you know, that you can do yoga. And you can do figure of eight, especially by, by you know, like a you have to close your ears. Okay. okay. Then you can do the figure of eight, you know, but that has oh, to be okay, shown. Okay. okay. So okay. that's a very good exercise. I tell my clients, you know, if you do like that, you can mm -hmm. do like a five, six times every day. Mm -hmm. So that will keep, you know, like that will help them a lot actually. And if you do the deep breathing, if mm -hmm. you have a vertigo, go for a deep breathing, mm -hmm. you know, then you have to come out. Otherwise, you know, you have to take care of that, actually. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Nair. Always a delight to be talking to you. And after talking to you, always I run to the kitchen to see that whether I have all these products <laughs> in the house. But now I think my home itself looks like a, a pharmacy, not like a pharmacy, as good, in a hospital good, pharmacy, good. where I get all the fresh vegetables and all the uh, little tips that you give here in the program. Uh, on behalf of all our viewers, we are so thankful to this program, Aware and Care. Thank you so much, Dr. Nair. Thank you for watching my program and promoting. Thanks a lot.